I recently bought a couple of Hot Wheels Formula 1 cars and they looked kinda accurate so I wanted to put them in a wind tunnel and luckily I had made one just a couple of years ago but when I printed it again and used it I realized how bad of a design it really was. It might look like it's doing what a wind tunnel is supposed to do but it's really not and I'll explain why in a bit. But after this minor setback I thought to myself I'm making that sweet YouTuber money now so why don't I just buy a mini wind tunnel and upon doing some research I found a bunch of videos videos on YouTube of people using this specific desktop wind tunnel so I decided to look it up thinking it would be like what 30 40 dollars but no it starts at 250 dollars and goes all the way up to almost 700 which is like 40 times my net worth I obviously cannot afford that but here's the plot twist even if I could, I would not buy this because as someone with a very real mechanical engineering degree, I simply cannot turn a blind eye to how much stuff is just straight up wrong about this wind tunnel. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my crappy old wind tunnel and try to redesign it by fixing its three major flaws and turn it into a way better wind tunnel than the Funtech Lab one, all while trying to keep the build cost less than the price of a large pizza so anyone can make this at home without having to free lands. Let's start with the first problem that we need to work on. So my old wind tunnel was made with some constraints. I was using a resin 3D printer back then because I couldn't stop sniffing toxic resin fumes, which clearly reflects in my video catalog from the time. But in case you didn't know, resin printers usually have a much smaller build volume compared to their FDM counterparts. And because of that, I had to make the wind tunnel's widest parts narrower than the width of this tiny build plate, which meant compromising with the proportions of the wind tunnel. This part, which is known as the contraction cone, accelerates the air that is coming into the wind tunnel and to efficiently do that, it needs to have its inlet area be at least 4 to 9 times the area of the exit, which obviously wasn't something that would have worked with my tiny resin printer, so I thought, eh, what's the worst that could happen, and just shrunk the inlet down until it fit on the build plate. And the result is that this contraction cone basically doesn't do anything. It's decorative, just like my appendix. To fix this, the wind tunnel, not my appendix, I redesigned the contraction cone with an appropriate contraction ratio and as you can see while the exit areas might be similar, the new inlet area is significantly bigger than the old one. In addition to the inlet being bigger, there's also now a dedicated settling chamber which houses a honeycomb and a screen to eliminate as much turbulence from the incoming air as possible. The diffuser, which is the end part of the wind tunnel that houses the fan, also had some issues related to its proportions, so I corrected them as well and made it longer with a smaller divergence angle to avoid flow separation and turbulence. Also, I added a honeycomb in my diffuser as well to eliminate the swirls generated by this CPU fan. Okay, pause. Remember how I told you that there was a lot of stuff wrong with the $250 wind tunnel? Well, apparently this company felt that scientific specifications were more like casual suggestions than something you should stick to because this wind tunnel just straight up does not have a contraction cone. And maybe the real contraction cone was the friends we made along the way, but it doesn't end there. It's the same story with their diffuser as well. It is also functionally absent. Also, the outlet honeycomb is right behind the car, which sucks because you need space for the wake to form. In their tunnel, the smoke gets sucked out before you can even observe the full turbulence patterns so you're basically just blowing smoke over your toy car in a plastic box for no apparent reason. I mean if that's what you're into then I highly recommend checking out a pack of menthols and an empty Pringles can. Just saved you 250 bucks, you're welcome. But anyway, now that our wind tunnel parts are up to spec, we can start working on the second issue which is ease of assembly and printability of the individual parts. When I made that original video, it was a fun week-long project with zero concerns about user-friendliness. Let me show you what I mean. This part, which is the test chamber, is very inconvenient to print. It has really thin parts and requires a lot of support which completely ruins the finish. And the window assembly is, well, just two random pieces of acrylic stuck to the inside edges of the test chamber. This concerning lack of foreskin, er, uh, I mean foresight, is a recurring theme here. Because all of the parts of the wind tunnel don't really connect with each other. Even in the video, they're just stuck to each other with some invisible tape. Which, by the way, I thought would be invisible because it says so on the packet, but clearly that was a lie. But anyway, for my revised wind tunnel, I want everything to have proper connections for the assembly while also being print in place. The test chamber is now made up of two parts and for the window, you now have a proper slot for the acrylic sheets so there's no gluing required. 
Also, did I mention that the only way to remove the car from my old wind tunnel was to pull out the fan and shove my hand inside the diffuser? Yeah, really should have thought about that while I was designing it. But anyway, for the new test chamber, you have a removable door at the top, so treating the wind tunnel like a brown man going through TSA checks is no longer required. Also, the parts now all connect with each other through these nubs and slots, so there's no tape needed either. And finally, since the parts for this new wind tunnel vary greatly in size, I made a base for everything which keeps the whole assembly perfectly horizontal. Okay, before we talk about the final issue which took me like 15 days to figure out, I want to thank my sponsor for this video, PCBWay. If you guys want to build something, whether it's a robotics project or a mechanical one like some of my other projects, or even if it's something more industrial like CNC or 3D printing, whatever you could possibly need, these guys can help. They've helped me with my past projects and their services are extremely affordable for the quality that you're getting with a quick turnaround. So it's a total no-brainer if you're starting a build project of your own. Check them out at the link in the description. Now back to the video. Okay, let's start working on the final issue, which is flow visualization. In my old wind tunnel, I used incense cones for smoke, and while it did provide me with some thick-ass smoke lines and lifelong respiratory issues, it had some drawbacks too. For starters, smoke tends to change from laminar to turbulent flow pretty quickly as it moves away from its source, and mathematical modeling of smoke is super complicated, so I'm not gonna go into the details of how it happens, but just know that temperature differential between the source and the ambient ambient air is a huge part of it. If you were around for my first wind tunnel video, you must have noticed that the individual flow visualization shots in the montage were very short, and this turbulence is the reason for that. I simply could not get a long enough shot without the flow getting turbulent, and even in some of these cherry picked shots, you can clearly see how much the smoke moves around before it even reaches the test subject. To fix that, we're gonna use this. Well, not this exactly because this is the size of an air fryer, but a smaller version of this. This is a cold air humidifier. It releases mist, which looks like smoke, but without any of the bronchitis. For our use, I bought this smaller USB mist maker, which looks like a wired landline vape your grandpa would have used, but it basically does the same thing as the large humidifier, just in a tiny form factor. Oh, and before I make an enclosure for this, I wanted to mention that this time I want to have those cool looking smoke lines in my wind tunnel, like the ones in full size tunnels. And for that, we're going to need a smoke manifold with three or four outlet pipes like this one. As for the enclosure for the mist maker, my idea is to have a small box which would trap the mist and then have a small DC fan push the mist out through the manifold and into the wind tunnel. And it did not work. For some reason, most of the mist just comes back out through the inlet and makes the fan very soggy. Now, I don't know if you know this, but making electronics soggy is generally not recommended. Also, the outlet manifold needs to be much bigger because this is proving to be too restrictive for the airflow. I redesigned the enclosure, this time with bigger manifold outlets and higher fan placement, and this doesn't work well either. So I took a break and did some research and found out that I could use the Venturi effect instead of forcing the mist out with a fan. Venturi effect is basically a way to create a low pressure zone by making the fluid flow through a smaller cross section. In case you didn't know, this effect is also used in current spec Formula 1 cars to increase traction. For our use case, I can just remove the soggy fan and make the manifold pipes way longer so that their ends reach the lower pressure area of the wind tunnel, which is towards the test chamber, which would allow for the mess to come out on its own because of the pressure difference. There is still some backflow from the inlet which is easily solvable by moving the inlet from the side to the top of the enclosure. But now that I look at it, these smoke lines look way weaker than what I had with the incense smoke. So I added another USB mist maker to the same enclosure and sure it looks considerably better than before. But now you have to deal with two USB power sources all while trying to avoid getting these chips wet which is honestly a pain in the ass. So I bought this. This is also a mist maker but it's different? I honestly do not know how it's different from the USB one in terms of functionality but for some reason this this creates noticeably thicker mist and comes with a wall adapter which is super convenient if you have walls at home. I redesigned the enclosure to fit this new mist maker and now it works perfectly. I also got this PWM speed controller for the fan so now we can adjust how slow or fast we want the airflow to be. Okay, so at this point we're all but done with the wind tunnel, but before I show you the final montage with all of my Hot Wheels cars, I want to test one more thing. 
I want to try and make a smaller wind tunnel, proportionally similar to the $250 one, just to see if all of my effort has even made a noticeable difference in performance, and here it is. It's got a really short contraction cone and diffuser with two honeycombs for straightening the airflow, and after running a couple of short tests, I think there is a noticeable difference, especially when it comes to how stable the airflow is at the same fan speed. Alright, now it's time for the montage, so here it is. Okay, if you guys want to make this wind tunnel for yourself, you can get the files along with the instructions and a bill of materials from my Gumroad or my Patreon. And I've also included the smaller wind tunnel files with this because why not? And if this is not your cup of tea, you can check out my other designs as well on the same platforms. There's currently 25% off on everything in my catalog, so feel free to use this coupon code to avail that discount. And as usual, a special thanks to my Patreon members for sticking around. I have noticed that I'm losing Patreon members every month, which was obviously my goal all along. But joking aside, consider joining my Patreon if you haven't already. Anyway, that's about it. I hope you guys have a happy new year and consider liking and subscribing if you feel like it. I'll see you next year. Goodbye. You and I, we are so random. You bring the darkness to the lights, play the atom. I ignore the fact that this will never last.